section five of this program, we're going to look at learning and different ways of learning. This might seem a bit odd in a business program, but it's very useful, very relevant. Remember, we talked about discovery, finding out about customer desires, employees' desires, deep motivations, ongoing refinement, ongoing learning. That's why it's important. So let's see how relevant it is to use the model and how not to. So using models, but also putting them aside. You might remember earlier on, another part of this program, I highlighted this article from Marketers, a major management scholar talking about the search for ambidextrous professors. He said it wasn't easy to find them because often they were too theoretical and weren't able to bring their knowledge to the real world. In the real world of managers is much more ambiguous and vague than what you'll find in the apparently controlled experiments that we try to run as scientists. So there's a whole debate around this. We call it sort of rigor versus relevance. So in the academic world, you have to be very rigorous so that you can say absolutely or as much as possible that this has an effect on that or X is associated with Y. Whether that level of rigor and attention to detail and proper conditions of the experiment is all that helpful in the real world is another question. So let's see, how can we think about this? So there's the models and then there's the application to your business. First of all, a model answers a specific question. Is it very entirely delimited? And that's what they're useful for because they're simplifications. They make it easier to analyze something as our brain cannot deal with too many variables at once. So it makes analysis easier, but as a result, it's an abstraction. They're tested against their predictions to see if what they predict works. So they might work in a certain context, but not in others. Most importantly, given that I mentioned the specific question, you can't expect the model to answer a question that was not asked. That's one of the issues with statistics. We hear about lies, damn lies and statistics. Well, you have to be very careful about the question that's asked because that is what is being answered, not something else, not a proxy. And timing is certainly relevant. Things can change, maybe certain models, certain approaches work in a particular time, say when the economy is well, doing well, but not when it's in a recession, for example. Hmm. Now, how do you bring those ideas into your business? Well, first of all, be careful not to use the model out of context. Remember, especially when they're based on quantitative empirical evidence, statistical evidence, their probabilities, their averages. Hofstadter points that out very clearly when he talks about national culture. He said, we've got dimensions about national culture, but they're just averages across many people. Think about Australia. There are many nationalities represented here. India, a vast country with regions, big differences. The same with China need to be careful. A point I've made several times, there are many realities. Different people will behave differently based on their social realities, based on what they know, based on what they've seen, and based on their, their constraints. And therefore, similarly, different firms will behave differently. So the model whether the model can be applied or how it will be applied will depend on your capabilities and your investments. If you don't have the right capabilities, either don't apply the model or make the investments to build up your knowledge and your capabilities, your competencies to deploy it. In reality, we do create, we do use theory all the time. If you think about it, a new product or a startup Corporate strategy is a bit like running an experiment. It's a, a hypothesis. You've got a strategy, you say, I think this will work. You've got to start up in a particular environment, 
I'm going to try this because I think this will be successful or profitable. And then the experiment is you take it to market and see how the market responds. What data do you get? So it's like an experiment. Just much more complicated than being in a lab. And the results you get will develop your own model, your own theory, so which will depend on your context, on your reality, whether it's a geographic context or a timing context. So then you can look at existing data and refine what you're thinking. Are there patterns? Are there seasonalities? Does the location matter? Is there a customer segment that matters? And perhaps your initial thinking needs to be adapted. And as we said earlier, when we looked at the execution of the power offer, the first draft is unlikely to be perfect and you refine it and keep on refining it and add nuances until to say it's perfect is never perfect. You must keep on doing it all the time. And even well-established models can fail because again, probabilities, they might be right 95, 99% of the time, but not always. Learn and adapt. Adapt. <laughs>